Welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can play PlayStation 2 games at 4K. So the first step is to go to PCSX2.net and then once you're here go to download and then you'll see these three big purple buttons and then simply select the button that matches your operating system. So I'm going to select Windows and once you've clicked it you'll see two sub options appear. You'll be able to download the installer or you can have a portable version. For this video I'm just going to select the installer. Once that's downloaded you'll find the executable file in your downloads folder and then simply double click it to initiate the installation process. The first window you'll see will ask you if you want the normal installation or the portable installation. I'm going to select the normal and press next and then it's asking if I want the start menu shortcut and the desktop shortcut. I'm going to leave them both enabled and I'll press next and then it will ask me for a destination folder and I'm going to leave that as the default location and click on install. And then finally, the installation process has completed. And then just make sure the Run PCSX2 button is ticked and then press Finish. Now you'll see a first time configuration window open up. First thing to do is make sure you select your language and then press Apply. And then the window will pop back up again and then press Next. And then you'll see a window pop up with all this random stuff. This is essentially like a plugin management kind of screen. But at this stage, we don't need to worry about that. We can just go to next. Right, now this is a very important screen. So every time PCSX2 tries to load a game, it's going to look for a BIOS file. Now, the BIOS file is critical in the running of this emulator as it is needed to play your games. But sadly, BIOS files are copyrighted to Sony and obtaining them can be quite tricky. So I'm not going to tell you where to go to get them. So I suggest going to Google and search for some PlayStation 2 BIOS files yourself. And then once you've downloaded the PlayStation 2 BIOS files, just make sure that they're in the folder that's listed in the BIOS search path. And once you've done that, you should see a screen that looks like this. Now there isn't one BIOS file that kind of rules them all. You'll need to find BIOS files that relate to the region of the games you're trying to play. So for example, if you have ISO files that are Japanese, you'll need the Japanese BIOS file. And the same would apply to US and Europe. Once PCSX2 recognizes the BIOS files, just go to finish. And then these two windows will show up. You have a program log and the actual emulator itself. So I'm just going to close the program log because I don't need it and I'll just be tinkering around with the emulator window. Now at this stage I recommend you plug in your control pad into the computer so I'm using a wired 8-bit do USB controller for my gaming. If you're using a wired or wireless Xbox 360 controller or Xbox One controller plug it in now if you can. It's generally plug and play but if you do want to configure the controller just go to config and go down to controllers and then plug in settings. And then here on this screen under pad one, you're able to go through each input and configure whichever button on the controller you want to use. Now let's load up a game. So the first thing to do is go to CD DVD, ISO selector and browse. And you basically want to find your PlayStation game file and select it. And then once you've selected it, if you go back to CD DVD, ISO selector, and down here you'll see the current game that's been selected. So in my case, it's Need for Speed Underground. And now we go to System and we have to boot the game. So there's two options, there's Boot ISO Full and Boot ISO Fast. Personally, I'm not quite sure what the technical difference is between the two are, but what I do know is if you go to Boot ISO Full, you'll get that PlayStation 2 boot screen. And if you just go to Boot ISO Fast, you kind of bypass that PS to boot screen and go straight into the game. Next thing is to select whichever option suits you best. I'm just going to go to fast for now and then we're going to witness the game load up. And here we go. The PlayStation 2 game has loaded and I'm just going to do a very brief bit of driving just to see the game in action. And as I mentioned earlier on, no controller configuration was required. It's just plug and play. I'd be eager to know whether the game looks as good as you remember it being. On to the next part of the process. So I'm just going to hit the brakes here. And now the next part of the process, which involves upgrading all the graphics to 4K. So I'm just going to make this window smaller. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just 
bump it up so it's to the right hand side of the screen. I'll move this window here. Now what we need to do is go to config, we need to go to video and plugin settings and I'll just move this here. Now these are the settings that I'm using so under renderer I'm going to open GL hardware. Interlacing I've left to automatic, texture filtering I've left to bilinear and internal resolution I am going to bump up to 4k and I'm doing that because I have a 4k monitor but if you've got a 1080p monitor or a 1440p monitor, I would just choose one of those settings. Like with all these settings, I highly recommend that you have an experiment. So I'll go to 4K and I've got anisotropic filtering at 16 and then go to OK. And let's maximize that window again. And there we go. Look, you can't see any of the jagged lines on the car anymore. And the buildings in the background look so much sharper. However, there is one problem. If you look at the road markings, you'll notice that there seems to be some kind of ghosting effect going on. And I'm going to show you how you can fix that. So if I just make this window smaller again and go back to config and video and plugin settings. Let's move this to the side and what I want to do is go to enable hardware hacks and go to advanced settings and hacks. I'll move this to the side. Just going to click on auto flush and then down here where it says texture offsets I'm going to type in 360 and 490 and then I'll go to OK and OK again and I'll make this window bigger and now you'll notice that the road markings seem to be back in alignment and let's see the game in action again and there we go 60 frames a second at 4k I hope you found this video helpful if you did please consider subscribing this has been Retro Crisis thank you for watching but I'm so frustrated